Today we see the NBA as the best basketball league in the world. With its history stretching all the way back to 1946, when the Philadelphia Warriors won the first championship, you'd think that the NBA was the first and only professional basketball league in North America. But what if I told you that wasn't actually true? What if I told you that there were professional basketball leagues before the NBA was created, and even other leagues created after the NBA that tried to steal players and fans? In this video, I'm going to be talking about the complicated history of the NBA and how it became the most dominant professional basketball league in the world. You may know that the game of basketball was created in the year 1891 by James Naismith, who created basketball to be played by at-risk youth at the YMCA he worked at. The game actually quickly spread from there, as some colleges, such as Vanderbilt, formed teams and played against local YMCA squads in 1893. The first game played between two colleges was said to be played in 1895, between Hamline University and the Minnesota State School of Agriculture, although there are some other schools that claim they were the first to do it. The first professional games were also done in 1895, such as the New York Wanderers and the Buffalo Germans. The Buffalo Germans basketball team went on to exist for 44 years and won 792 games and only lost 86. Imagine playing basketball with a couple of your friends in high school and deciding to make a professional team that went on to be one of the best basketball dynasties ever. Their all-time record is like going 74-8 and eight in the NBA for 10 years in a row. This is the competition that the Golden State Warriors needed during their 73-9 year. But back on to the history of basketball. One thing you should know is that before there was actually professional leagues in the United States, there were some professional teams, you could call it, that went and played other teams. But they weren't in an official league. The first attempt at a professional league in the United States was the National Basketball League, also known as the NBL, created in 1898. In the NBL, the basketball players were actually known as cagers, as the court was surrounded with chicken wire, which then changed to rope a couple years after. And the reasoning for the court being surrounded with wire and rope was because there was no out-of-bounds rules, so the game would go quicker. The league wasn't stable, as it stopped and started again many times. Although the league was exciting, fans didn't necessarily know the quality of the game they were going to watch, because players would regularly jump from team to team many times throughout the season. The first real consistent basketball league in the United States was then the American Basketball League, also known as the ABL, which was founded in 1925. The founder, Joseph Carr, was also the president of the newly founded NFL. The league was first composed of nine independent basketball teams throughout the United States that regularly played each other. The ABL worked to incentivize players to play professionally, as back in the day there wasn't much glamour, money, and fame that went into being a professional athlete. The league offered some players up to $1,500 a month, which doesn't sound like a lot until you realize that a regular construction worker at that time made about $15 per week. The league implemented rules such as the out-of-bounds rule and the double dribble. The Cleveland Rosenblums won the first league championship against the Brooklyn Arcadians, with Cleveland's main scorer, Honey Russell, scoring 7.4 points per game, which was the second highest amount in the league. Funny enough, the Cleveland team regularly had games with 10,000 fans, which is probably more than Cleveland gets today. The ABL's reign over professional basketball didn't last long, as the Midwest Basketball Conference was created in 1935, which sounds more like a college conference than anything, and that's precisely why the league switched their name. Two years after they started in 1937, the Midwest Basketball Conference switched their name to the NBL, which as we know was already a name that was used in the past for a basketball league. The NBL was now a much more stable league though, as it was owned by three companies, 
General Electric, Goodyear, and Firestone. The league was pretty informal, as teams could schedule their own games and decide whether they wanted to play 4-10 to ten minute quarters or 3-5 to five minute periods. All the teams needed to do in order to qualify for the playoffs was to play in 10 games in a season, four of which being on the road. Teams were also either owned by companies or were just independent. Company-owned teams usually succeeded, because aside from players getting paid for basketball, the companies would offer player jobs with their actual companies as an incentive to play for them. As time went on, there was talk of a new professional basketball league, and sadly for both the ABL and the NBL, they would have a lot more competition, which would soon lead to their demise. The Basketball Association of America, also known as the BAA, was created in 1946. Having access to much bigger arenas and facilities, opposed to the small arenas, ballrooms, or high school gyms that the ABL and NBL played in, the BAA would be able to attract and take away all of the ABL and NBL's teams, players, and fans. The league started with 11 teams, and its first year was a bit rough. With many teams playing on ice hockey arenas, the arena owners would simply put the wooden floor over the ice, which made big puddles throughout the court. And since the arena was cold, fans would have to come with blankets, and some players even played wearing gloves. After its first year, four teams quit the league, which left the league with only seven teams. Gladly for the BAA, a team from the ABL, the Baltimore Bullets, joined in 1947. And in 1948, four teams from the NBL actually joined their league, which brought the league to have 12 teams, which was more than they started with, so that was a good sign. The four teams that joined the BAA from the NBL caused a surge in talent, and this can mostly be seen by OG Lakers basketball legend George Mikan now being in the BAA. In 1949, the BAA actually merged together with the six remaining NBL teams to create the National Basketball Association as we know it today. Even though the NBA was basically a new league, they recognize the short three-year history of the BAA as their own, but they don't recognize the NBL. And this is a confusing part for people, because the NBA officially became a league in 1949, However, they use the BAA's history, which started in 1946, as their own. This is also where some controversy arises when tallying up championships, as some teams don't believe that the first Warriors and Lakers championships should actually count, since they were part of the BAA and not the NBA. It's quite interesting, and I don't think most people know that when you look at NBA history and records back between 1946 and in 1949, that wasn't actually the NBA. I couldn't find any more information on the ABL, but they disbanded in 1955 after not playing for two seasons in a row. And I would assume the reason is that they couldn't keep up with the amount of attention the NBA was getting since they had more teams, better facilities, and better players. At this point, the NBA was sitting in a league of its own. But this lasted only for about 20 years until a new threat came to town, the ABA. Like, comment, subscribe, and thanks for watching.